Time for After the Round, when we sit down and talk with a disc golf legend. And they really don't come more legendary than this guy. 11-time world champion Ken Climo is with us. Ken, thanks for being here. Thank you, Brian. Now, we've talked before. Today, let's focus on the last five years, approximately 98 to 2002. And we'll begin in 98. Tell me what you're thinking, what you were shooting at the beginning of that year. Well, at that point, you know, I was still riding my streak of world championships of eight in a row at that point. And I was feeling pretty good. I think I might have been not practicing as much as I had in the early days. And it wasn't really affecting my game that much, but it did affect it a little bit. And I think that was just due to my choice to rather have longevity on the sport than to bust it out and be done with it. I want to I want to last. I want to play the sport as long as I can. Were you starting to feel some some negative physical uh, things going well, on? Just Were you getting a little sore? The one-sided aspect of the sport, you're twisting, rotating, you're twisting your back very hard, and you get a lot of knee and hip rotation. And I've been doing things to counteract that recently in the last five years. I've been swinging golf clubs more and doing equalizer rubber stretches, doing a throwing discs, actually throwing the disc left-handed a lot. And I've been equalizing it out a little bit, but in my first 10 years of playing is where I didn't do that stuff, and I did start to feel a little something. So how were you, uh, how were you shooting? What kind of uh, tournaments were you winning that year in 98? Um, I know you were slowing down they a little all, bit, They you? all run together. The years run together so much, it's, it's hard. But I, I know I had a decent year that year. It wasn't one of my best ones. But I had a decent year. I won a few Super Tours. Anymore, with the level of play that's out there, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking to get in the top four basically make the final nine type of thing. And if I've done that, I've played a pretty good tournament and I'm happy with it. I win it even better. In the years prior to 98, you were touring very hard. You were playing you know, up to 26 tournaments a year. That year, you slowed down a little bit, correct? Correct. You know, my son's getting a little older. He's, uh, he's eight now and he would have made him four back then. And He's, he's become a lot, lot more part of my life since I'm divorced and I, I get him on the weekends. Therefore, I've taken a few, few tournaments off to spend more time with him and that's important to me. So in 2000, you finally did it. You got the 10th gold basket there in your backyard. Yeah, I, it was kind of bittersweet. Uh, 10 is 10 is 10, but 10 in a row would have been fancy. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you had to be you know, gratified I was that very you were gratified, able to, yes. to, be, I mean, to be there. Especially at the level of the game these days. The, everybody's picking up their game. There's players that are putting the lights out of it, driving the snot out of it, and just basically eating up the courses. you got to stay with that. So let's go on to 2001. That year, uh, now you've, you're back on top again. Everyone is once again gunning for you, not that they really ever stopped. But did you feel some renewed pressure in 2001 now that you had the uh, the title again? No, not really. I I think it made me almost a little more lax because I'd won the 10th one and I'd done it. And I don't really feel pressure that much anymore. It's, it's just basically doing it or not doing it. And pressure might come in the last nine holes when it's tight. But all in all, it's, it's just about clearing your head getting a good thought process going. And that's what I've been trying to do the last three or four years now, is just have fun with the game. And how many events, if you recall, did you play in 2001? 2001, I believe, played 18 or 19 events. It's still a pretty solid, solid I mean, season. Yeah, when you, have your, when you have your son, 26 weekends out of the year, and you play 20 tournaments, that leaves six for yourself. I would say uh, not very many of us could uh, handle that kind of schedule. Well, I get my time off during the week sometimes, and that's, that's where I get my sanity. I re my, renew myself, rest and relax, and the rigors of travel. Travel takes it out of you. Indeed it does. Yeah, I think we all are, are well aware of that. So uh, Minnesota, 2001. Minnesota. The, uh, the year of the heat wave. <sighs> That was the hottest temperatures I've ever seen, felt, been in. I live in Florida, and that was as hot as I've ever been. My hands wouldn't stop sweating. Uh, it, was, it was tough. I believe it affected me. But it wasn't like I didn't fight through the weather. I fought through the weather. I just didn't play my best. And I had a really bad round at the wrong moment. And at this point, it was your 13th World Championships that you'd participated in? Yes. 
So you've got more experience than probably any other guy there. Certainly more experience as a champion. You've got the heat to deal with. You've got you know new up and coming competition. What happened there in Minnesota? Well, in semifinal round, it must you must be referring to when uh, it was Eric Tracy, Steve Rico, Cam Todd, and myself. And I had a unfortunate happening on one hole. I took a quadruple bogey seven or something like that and basically just didn't play my kind of golf the rest of the way in and Cam Todd shot an unbelievable round. He was already ahead of me and he shot just lights out golf. I don't even know if I would have played my best round that round and shot a hot final nine if I'd even been able to catch him. So that, that bad round really only kept me out of the finals, I think, rather than took me out of the chance to win it because I don't know if I'd have caught Cam even the way he shot. So are you saying that you let a bad hole affect the rest of your round? Probably a little bit, because I, I play to win. If I get second, third, or fourth, that's the same to me. Um, it's a world championship, I'm playing to win. At the point I knew I wasn't gonna win, I didn't give up. I just don't think that I focused as well. So you were looking at the big picture, saying, at this point, it's not gonna happen for me, Maybe I'll slack off a little bit. I didn't slack off. Or maybe off I won't really. play my best golf. Maybe I won't be as. It's not as like I didn't try to play. As I, might I think be. that was it. Maybe just a little quick on things. It just it wasn't like I wasn't trying. I wasn't missing on purpose or anything, or throwing it into the tree on purpose. I, <laughs> I just might have got a little quick and wanted to get done. So how so, did you how did you put that behind you? It wasn't really anything to put behind me. I mean, I play so many tournaments. Like I said, the World Championships is just another tournament. It's. It's a longer tournament, that's all. It's just another tournament, though. And uh, that's the way I think about the Worlds. I really don't think they're that special of, like, someone's god because they won the Worlds one year. I just think it's another tournament. I just happened to win that tournament 11 times. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> and speaking of 11 times, that takes us to this year, 2002, when you won an amazing 11th world title. I mean... It's just incredible. I, I don't know of any other sport where one player has dominated so many years. I'm sure there are. I've, I've heard about some tiddlywinks guys or something that won 15, 18 years, something like that. But, but an athletic An athletic sport. sport where it's mind, it's matter, it's, it's presence, it's physicality. It, yeah, um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think that no one's ever going to do it again in my sport. I don't know about any other sport, but it's this sport we're talking about, and I don't think it'll ever be done again, and I think that's something that I'll take to the grave with me and know that it's safe. And I, that's basically what, how I feel about my whole legacy is I've done what I'm going to do. Any, anything beyond this point is just, it's just topping. And it feels good. It really does. I, I don't know why God picked me to to play disc golf as well as I, I have. But uh, I love the sport. I think that has a lot to do with it. I love watching the disc fly. And it's fun. And I meet a lot of new people and travel to a lot of cool places. When uh, you and I talked a long time ago and I asked you this question, and I want to repeat this because the answer I thought was, was uh, just so appropriate. I asked you, you know, hey, Ken, now, you've been on the top of this game for so many years at the point just before it's really going to break out into the mainstream and there's going to be all the major media and all the money and all the celebrity and all the things that, that go with that. And I asked you, you know, how do you feel knowing that you, that you happened just before the big bust out? And you turned to me and you said, well, how do you think Gordie Howe feels? And I thought that was just so cool because it's so true. I mean. You know, it's a very similar situation. It's Bobby just, Jones, I mean, there's, yeah, that's, that's, I don't, I don't feel like I started the sport or anything like that. I don't claim to have, you know, anything like that. I just, I feel like I was the first real player that, that took the game up a level, I guess I should say. It took the game up, brought it to a new level, and, and that's a nice feeling. You know, the, like you talk about the bust out, the media. My son, maybe his son will benefit from that. And that, that's enough for me. 
chances are very good that the sport will be at another level before this guy is out of the game. He's 11-time world champion Ken Climo. Ken, thanks for your time. Thank you, Brian. It's a pleasure.